Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Mo ICT. In this tutorial, I'm going to be making a butterfly catching game using Windows Form and C Sharp. Let me just show you a quick demo of this game. Okay, so this one is going to be a multi-form game. So here we have our game start screen where we have a button and then we have the butterfly animations with some text about you know the, like the uh, title of the game and basically how to play. So the rules of this game is pretty simple. There'll be butterflies flying around and then we just need to click on them to collect them. And we have 60 seconds to play the game. After 60 seconds, the game will end and then we should be able to restart the game again. So if we just click on start here, as you can see, our background is loaded and we have all these transparent butterfly images that are flying around. Um, I have lots of these uh, different GIF animations and uh, that are basically being loaded and animated in the Windows form. So if I click on one of them, Okay, so it shows that I caught one and it also shows on the bottom here how much time we have left. Okay, so if I keep, oh, keep clicking on a few of these. And one thing you'll notice that the butterfly images are completely transparent which means that even when they are overlaying with each other you can still see what's behind them so it doesn't look like the blocky picture box style and that's because the butterflies are being drawn dynamically on the screen and when the timer expires right a message box will show and say that time's up you've caught 27 butterflies which we have click ok to try again so if i click ok it will clear the form and then we should be able to play the game again Okay, so this uh, game we're going to be creating using Visual Studio and Windows Form. So to get started, let's create a new project. Okay, so here I have my Visual Studio loaded. Uh, before we create a project, uh, make sure you download the game assets from the Moo ICT website. The link is in the description. These are the game assets that we're going to be using. So here I have 10 different butterflies. Uh, with different colors. So if I double click on one of them, um, as you can see that they are animated GIFs. I can click on next and you can see the different colors and they all animate exactly the same way. And uh, the last image is a background image that's going to be applied to the form and the rest of them will be drawn dynamically on top of the form. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize that for now. We're going to need that one later. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new project here. So I have used the Windows Form app before. If you haven't, you can just simply search for Windows from the list here. And then it should be the first one here. So basically it says Windows Form app. So make sure you pick the .NET one, not the .NET framework. All right. So uh, this one here, it says Windows Form app .NET framework, but we want the .NET one. Uh, there's nothing spe uh, specific about this, but .NET framework has been um, out of date for a while now. So it's better to get practice on the .NET. So let's click next. Uh, here I'm going to name the project Butterfly Catching Game More ICT. And then click next. Uh, for the framework, .NET 6 is perfectly fine for us. Then click create. Okay, so now that our project has loaded, um, basically this is going to be a multi-form object-oriented programming tutorial. So we will be creating a class as well. So this window here will be used as our start window. And then we'll also create another form that will go to the game window. So let's do the game window as well at the moment. So when you go to your Visual Studio uh, Solutions Explorer, uh, you have the butterfly catching game more ICT written here, right? Right before the dependencies, right click on that and then go to add and then click on form windows forms. And then when this window loads up in this window, instead of form two, just type in game window like so, and then click add. Okay, these two windows will be identical except for the title text because they're pretty much just the empty window right now. Okay, one last thing we need to do is to create a class. So I'm going to right click on the uh, butterfly catching game more ICT name again, right click on that, say add. And then in this case, instead of saying form Windows form, I'm going to say class. I'm going to click on that. In the class, we're going to create a new class called butterfly. 
Okay, and then click on add. Okay, so this will create a empty class for us that we can use in our games window. All right, so we're going to leave that one blank for now. Let's go back to the form one CS or the first form. Okay, let's resize this one to the 900 by 650. Let's resize to this one here. And then we're going to change the title of this one to say Butterfly Catching Game or oh, ICT. So the title shows up on there. Uh, we're also going to change the back color. Okay, so the back color we can change it to a pastel color. The one I picked before uh, was a pinkish one, I think. I'm just going to copy the value from that one. So I can paste that over and then you can copy the same value. So the values here are 254, 233, and 231. So you can just say 254, 223, 231. Uh, you can pick any background color that you like. Um, I thought because it's butterflies, I thought I'll just use um, light colors. All right, let's go to the toolbox. Drag and drop a label. Right here, so this is going to be our title label. I'm going to change this one's text say butterfly catching game tutorial more no, ICT okay so that changes there uh, let's change this one's auto size to false so we can manually size this ourselves let's make it slightly bigger here okay and then come to the font option and then in the font option I'm going to choose there's a um, MV Bowley yeah the slightly italic one so i'm going to pick that one here the bold and then set the size to say 42. click ok and then our font should be big enough there so at the moment it's aligned to the left so we can align that to the middle so align that to the middle like so and then we can make it slightly smaller without yeah that's fine Okay, um, let's go ahead and get a button. Okay, so the button is going to be the start button that's in the middle of form. Uh, while the button is selected, go to the properties, change the text from button one to start. And then there's a font option here. Okay, the font option there. Okay, so let's change that to there's a cursive, uh, monotype cursive. That's it. So monotype cursive. And then we can change the font size to 26 or even large actually because the button's quite big. 26. Yep, that's fine. So we can actually see the button text. All right. Uh, we're going to need four picture boxes to the side. Uh, so in order to use the picture boxes, we need to first obviously import the images over. So once we get the picture boxes, we should be able to import the images easier. Right, let's go get our picture boxes. So I'm just going to drag and drop picture box here. So while I have the empty picture box selected, I'm going to right click to choose image. So from the project resources um, file one selected, not the local resource, we want to import all of them to the project resource file. So I'll click on import. So right now it's going to take you to your documents. Um, I have mine saved on the desktop, so I can directly go to the location there. All right, so if you have it selected, you can just click to your desktop and then go to your folder. I'm going to select all these images here and then click open okay so after i have them open right now i have them all imported into the game okay so for now i'm just going to select one click ok and then right here there's a little triangle there if you just click on that and then click on size mode to auto size so we don't want to manually size them just yet so with one of them selected i can just hold control and drag that picture box so it makes a copy of itself and then drop it here okay and then i'm going to select both of them so if you hold shift and while one of them is selected hold shift and click on the other one you select both and then i can hold control again and then duplicate that to this side here okay and then i'll just move him maybe this way okay so because they're all four of them are the same i want to change it up a little bit I can say choose image. I can go to back to my project resources. Select the second one. 
click on choose image select the third one right click choose image maybe select the fourth one here even the fifth one in different color yeah something brighter would be nice okay so there we have our four uh, butterflies here so if i even run this application now you should be able to see the butterflies animating And then we have a button there. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so one last thing we have is just the um, instructions on how to play. So I'm gonna drag and drop another label here. Okay, so this label is going to be the instructional label. And the first thing to do is to um, set the auto size to false. So I can drag that one across. So we, we don't want the text to go outside the um, outside the form. Okay, so with that done, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste the text over. Okay, so to insert paragraphs into a label, uh, to do this is if you write the text somewhere about how to play the game, you can simply just copy and paste it. So if you go to select the label, go to the text, click on the drop down here, right here, you can paste pretty much all of it in there. Okay, and then as soon as you Click on the form it will be applied to the label so right now the text is quite small so we're gonna make it slightly bigger and uh, maybe change the font as well and change the title font mv only regular is fine above okay okay i don't think there's any text left there Okay, so that way it's just, you know, how to play the game. You have a limited time to catch the butterflies. Um, you can uh, simply click on the butterflies in the garden and it will be added in the school. You can only play for maximum 60 seconds in the game. Good luck. Okay. Yep, that's fine. So now we just need to program the button. So it opens the second window when we click on it. So because there's only one button here, uh, we don't have to manually go and insert an event. I can double click on the button here and that will add an event for us in the C sharp script that's for the form one. So if you notice this one is here called form one.cs design and here is a form one.cs. So whenever you double click on whenever we double clicked on it, it opened up the code view for the form one. Okay. So right here we're gonna create a new instance of the class window. Uh, sorry of the game window. So I'm going to call this on game window because that's what the form is called. So if you look at the solution explorer there, it's the game window. Okay, and then I'll call it game equals to new game window like so. All right, so that's the new instance of the game window. And then after that, we're just going to say game.show. So it's basically going to create a new instance and it's going to display it. It's going to call the other form to be displayed on the monitor. So if I run this one now, as soon as i click on it it displays the empty game window for us in here so there's our title window now done and then now we can work on our game window all right great so i'm going to close the form one.cs so that way we don't have to worry about that one and then work on the butterflies m class and the game window let's apply the background image to the game window and make a couple of changes so make the changes to this one we're going to say about eight change this one's size the form size to 840 by 570 577 not too big so it's manageable and we also want to change the title of this one to game window butterfly Matching game OCT. Okay, so it shows that it's the game window for this one. Right. Um, we can go over to there's a background image option in the properties. Click on the three dots there and then select the background image. Okay, so as you can see, the background image is tiled. So whenever the background image size finishes, it starts again. What we need to do is go to the background image layout option, click on stretch. So that way it stretches corner to corner okay 
Um, we also need another uh, picture box that is going to be our bottom border. So we just drag it across here. This one is just basically to display the or the text inside. Okay, so you can um, pretty much just measure it on however much you want. So we can then work off that butterflies don't accidentally fly behind D. So we want to make sure that it stays stays on top. Yep, so just if you need to know the number for this one, the size of it is 889 and then height is 42. Okay. So and then we also need to change this one's background color. When I get the picture box, change the background color to white. Okay, because we're gonna, the labels we're going to put on top, they will have a white background as well. Right, so let's go ahead and collect the labels. Let's drag and drop the first label here. So the first label, I'm going to give this one a background color white. And then set the font to bold. 14 okay and then change this one's text to time left zero zero okay, but if it black actually so it doesn't have to be red okay so i'm just going to copy and paste this label again okay, and i'm going to drop it on this side and in this case i'm going to call uh, change the text of this one on the right to port zero okay so however much however many butterflies that we can all right and then while this one is selected i can go and change the name of this one to lbl port so we know which one we're changing and then this one is going to be lbl time Okay, so LBL and a capital T, LBL and a capital C for this one. Um, we need to click on the form again. So there's one more uh, option that we need to change, and it's the double buffered. So we're going to change that from a false to a true. So with the double buffered, what it does is like it allows us to have more frame rate, and then it stops a lot of the glitchiness that you can see when an element is moving on the screen. Okay, and that's a very common thing with uh, Windows Form. By enabling double buffer, we're able to see a lot more smooth animation on the screen. Okay, with that done, let's go back to the toolbox. Let's drag and drop a timer. The form. So this timer here from timer one, I'm going to call it game timer. Um, set the enable to true. Interval to 20. Right, and then uh, click on the little lightning bolt icon there that's for the events and then call this one game timer event okay the so game timer event so now when i clicked and uh, pressed enter it created a game window cs so that's the cs file that's responsible for the game window so click on the form again uh, i'm still in, inside the events here so what we need is a click event for the form so that's how we're going to generate whether we click on a butterfly or on the form okay so let's go and find the click right there say form click event right so there's our form click event right there and the game timer event uh, we need one more event for the form that's there's a while the form is selected don't click on anything else so um go to find the paint so the paint event we're going to need to draw the butterflies and the animation on the screen okay so click on the paint there and say form paint event okay, so these are the three events that we need okay so after the three events we're going to need to do a couple of custom functions um, to make the game work okay so first one we're going to need is to set up the butterflies Okay, so the first function we're going to need is to make the butterflies. Okay, so they um, private void make butterfly like so. 
All right, so this is an empty function. So end of that function, let's make another one. Okay, so and this one's going to be my with void restart game. Okay, and then after that one, we we'll need one called private void and game over. Okay, so these are the three extra functions that we're going to need alongside with the events. There's another event that we're going to be adding for the animation, but that we'll do slightly later on as we start to add the code. Okay, so before we get started on this one's script, let's go and finish the butterfly class. So this is an internal class. Okay, so here we can actually generate a butterfly with the images that we want, and then we can use that as a class to then create an object of a butterfly inside the form and then that object can be interacted with by the user. So to do that, let's uh, first go ahead and create a public image called butterfly image. Right, to use an image, we actually need to include the drawing. So say using system.drawing. C Sharp will um, pretty much automatically import it, but better to import it ourselves. Okay, say public int position x. Position y. And with speed, uh, speed x, and then speed y. We do them together actually. Okay, and we also need a couple of more. It's going to be else one called limit and then one called move limit. So it can all be done in one line. Okay, let's do a, a random one. So let's do create a new random class called rand equals to new random. So we're going to need a random class to generate a random number on what speed the butterflies are going to be moving on the screen and what direction they're going to be going. Okay, so let's create the constructor. So with each class, you need a constructor. So basically, when you say, for example, this is a class here called random. We're creating a new instance of it here. And this is the constructor that we're calling. So inside the constructor, you usually have the main values that it needs to load in order to use that class. So here we're going to be giving the values that we want for the butterfly. First one we're going to do is something called a limit. So a limit, the reason we're using a limit is um, we want we don't want the butterflies just to go from up, down, left and right. We want it to change direction every now and again so the movements are slightly more realistic and unpredictable. So by using a limit, we can then assign that to the move limit here. And then once the move limit goes down a certain value, we can move the butterfly in another direction and then reset it back to limit and then do the same again as it goes down so that way there's a um, certain unpredictability in the game let's do the limit here equals to rand dot next okay, set 200 by 400 so anything between 200 and 400 is going to generate a number between that okay say move limit is equals to limit okay and then speed x is equals to and next and so here once again we're going to say minus five two five then generate a number between these two All right so i just press ctrl d to duplicate the line because i'm going to go literally to change that to speed y okay so speed y and speed x are going to be doing the similar thing so if it's a minus five the butterfly will move left if it's a positive number it will move right okay and then we need to set the height is going to be 43 and then width is going to be 60. okay so that's going to be our main constructor values uh, we also need another function that's going to be responsible for moving the butterflies uh, using the move limit okay so let's do that here quickly let's say public void uh, move butterfly So this one is going to be running from inside the timer. So basically this will keep track of it every, milli every 20 millisecond. We can say move limit 
be minus minus so it's going to reduce one from the move limit every time the timer ticks okay and then we're going to say if move limit is say less than zero right and in this case we're going to check if um, speed x is less than zero meaning if it's going left we're going to switch it to move going right so speed x is going to be equals to and dot next and between two and five so we don't want it to go too fast so we'll give it a positive random positive number else so if it's not less than zero then we're going to say then it's going to be next run dot next between minus five to minus two, between minus five to minus two minus five then minus two you know, when it goes negative the smallest smaller number is higher than the bigger number okay so that's for the speed x uh, we also need to do for the speed y i'm going to copy and paste that here okay so i'm just going to change the x to y so you can do the same thing for us okay so one if an else is for the speed x one if an else is for the speed y okay and then after that what we need to do is then we need to basically set a new random value this one so we're going to say uh, move limit equals to equals to and dot next somewhere between say 200 and the limit okay so we, whatever we set the limit to so that way no two butterflies will have the same value so that we get rid of some of these empty spaces from here Okay, so here is the class that we need for the butterfly. We have the main constructor, initial variable declarations, and the main constructor, and the public function for move butterfly. Okay, so now we can get started on the main game. Okay, so here before the main public function, um, public game window constructor, we're gonna, I'm going to make some space here and to make a couple of global variables. The first one is going to be float. I'll call it time left is equal to 60f so we want to give it a 60 second gameplay then we're going to have a int full court is equals to zero uh, int spawn time is equals to zero int spawn limit 30 to 30 so we want maximum 30 butterflies on the screen at a time i'm going to create a new list of butterfly so this is the butterfly class that we created we're creating a list so we can um, put any of the butterflies that's created inside of this list so it's a lot easier for us to draw them and control them in the game and call this one butterfly list go to new list and then make sure you do the brackets in the end we're going to need a new random class so rand equals to new random Okay, and we're also going to need a image array. Okay, so to declare an array, first type in the type of data that you want. So in this case, it's an image. And then we put the square brackets next to it. So it's, and once you've done both the bracket, then we can call this one butterfly, butterf, not butter images, butterfly images equals two. And then we'll do the curly brackets. So while you hold shift and curly brackets there, inside of here now we can declare all the images that we want so at the moment we have all our images in the resources so it goes from 0 to 10 right so we just need to name them all inside of this array i'm just going to say properties so we, no, properties properties the resources dot zero one like so. so the easiest way to do this is going to be to copy and paste that so we'll copy that let me zero two comma zero three comma zero four zero five zero six zero seven zero eight zero nine and then ten okay so here we have our ten images loaded okay so this is going to be inside of this array so what we're going to do is we're going to select a random one from this array and then we're going to assign it to the butterfly image that we have here okay that way we don't have to load or load them each time the class is loaded we only need to load it once okay so to begin let's go do the make butterfly function here 
I'm going to create an int called i equals two and dot next. And then inside the next, this time here, I'm going to say butterfly images dot length. So basically it's just going to generate a random number between the length of this. So it's, I've got 10 and ent entries inside. It's going to generate a random number between them. Okay. And then we can use the number to select the image. Let's create a new butterfly here. Let's say butterfly. Okay, new fly equals to new butterfly like this. Okay, so this is what we're creating a new instance of a butterfly. The new butterfly dot butterfly image is equals to then butterfly image and then we're passing in the eye. So we have the butterfly image array, the square brackets, and then passing in the eye. So it's going to select a random one from that list. Butterfly the image, new butterfly, new butterfly dot position X is equals to and dot next. So it's going to be between 50 and the client size. So and size dot width and we want to do minus 200 so we want to make sure it stays within the confines of the form new butterfly dot position dot y is equals to run dot next and this one is also going to be 50 and then this dot and size the height this time and then say minus 200 Okay, so after we've done that, now we can add the butterf new, newly created butterfly to the butterflies list. Butterfly list dot add. And then we can just pass in the new butterfly here. Okay, now alongside with the new butterfly that we're adding, we also need to create a image animator. So what an image animator does is it will, if this is a GIF image, which it is, because we're drawing it dynamically to the screen, it's not going to animate itself. So we have to assign an image animator with the image. So that way the GIF, ani GIF animation is playing when the object is added to the form. So to add that, we have to say image animator, like so. And then say animate. And then inside of that one, we have to reference which image we want to assign it to. We're going to say new butterfly. Then butterfly image like so okay and then we can say this dot on frame changed handler okay so on frame change handler hasn't been created yet we're going to create that now okay so when you create that it's going to show a red line to say okay this is not here what we're we doing so we just when you hover your mouse over it it says show potential fixes click on that and then there's going to be property field field read only but we want the method if you click on the method here it just adds it right underneath okay so it adds it right underneath here so we're just going to delete that throw new exception line we don't want it to cause an error when it runs okay and then in this event we're only going to put in this dot invalidate invalidate so basically it just refreshes the frame as it animates so it erases the ones before and then it plays the ones next. Okay, so what are we at here? Let's do the restart in the game over function because those are the shortest ones. Okay, so in the restart one, we basically gonna say this dot invalidate. So we're gonna delete everything when the game is restarting from the previous frames because at this point the timer is gonna be stopped. And uh, we're gonna say uh, butterfly list uh, is gonna be cleared. We're gonna clear everything from inside of it so we can add a new butterflies to it. Port is going to be set to zero again. Um, time left is going to be 60F. Um, spawn time will be zero. Okay, and LBL time is basically going to be um, time zero zero, like so. LBL time dot text. Okay, and then LBL quote dot text is going to be Port zero, okay, and then 
And lastly, we'll say game timer dot start. So once it resets everything, we should be able to start the timer again to play. Okay, and then in the game over function, we're going to basically say game timer dot stop. So we stop the timer, and then we'll say message box dot show. We'll show a message. Okay, times up like so. Um, and then we're going to say here you've port space plus port. So that's the value of how many we caught in the game. Do another quotation here space butterflies and then click OK to try again. And then after that, we do a comma. Do another quotation here and says mm. yeah, so that's the title that's the caption that's the title of the message box otherwise it just shows up as a blank box and after the message box is cleared we're just gonna run the restart game function so as soon as the game is over show the message box then run the restart game function so you all can start again okay so at the moment we creating the butterflies adding it to the list now let's draw it onto the screen here okay so to draw it on the screen first we need to run the image animator so say image animator update frames so that way however many images that are on the screen here it will update each one and then after that we need to draw each butterfly that's on the screen so we're going to say for each butterfly so that's the class that we're after okay Butterfly with a lowercase here. All right. In butterfly list. Okay, so any butterfly exists inside the butterfly list, we're gonna draw onto the screen. So we say e draw graphics. Draw, draw image. Then do the brackets here. So then we're gonna say butterfly dot butterfly image. Because butterfly itself is not the image, the image in, exists inside of it. So that's what we're after. Okay, and then say butterfly.position.x, butterfly.position.y, butterfly.height, and then, oh, sorry, it's supposed to be width first, width, and then butterfly.height. Okay, so you get your x, y, width, and then your height. Okay, so that's what we need for the paint event because the paint event is basically just taking everything from the list and drawing it on the screen. The movements are going to be happening inside of the timer one, which we'll do slightly later. Okay, so next one is the form click one. So the click event is slightly tricky. Um, it's because we're not using a picture box in this game. We're using an image that's being drawn dynamically and images don't have a mouse event at all in the class. So what we need to do is we need to compare where the click is happening, whether the click is happening where the image is drawn. If so, we'll remove the image from wherever it's being drawn and then we'll add one to our court goal. Okay. So to do that, we need to run a for each loop. Once again, we check for butterflies, only butterfly in the list. Okay. And then after that, we're going to look for the mouse event argument. So mouse event, I'm going to call it mouse equals to, do a bracket here. This event argument, we just need to do a casting. So we're basically saying this event here, we're specifically interested in the mouse event. Okay. So now we can compare the mouse X and Y with X and Y value and the position value of the, the image. Okay. So if mouse x is greater than or equals to butterfly dot position dot x and mouse dot y is greater or equals to butterfly dot position dot y and mouse dot x is less than uh, butterfly dot position dot x plus butterfly dot width and mouse dot y is less than butterfly dot position dot y plus butterfly dot height. 
okay? So whatever the click happens, if we are inside the boundary of where the image is, so we are inside of the, we are in the same position, if not greater position than the uh, butterfly's X and Y value, but we must be inside of the boundary of where the height and width is. So this is why all of them, this is what's called a Boolean expression, and it's quite a long one. So if all of them are true, in this case, only then we can register a click. Okay, and only then we can say butterfly list dot remove. So whichever one is clicked, it gets removed from there. And then we're going to say call plus plus. Okay. So if you need to pause it here and then make sure that you got all the and plus um, and the position X, position Y, height and width correctly, you can do so. Okay, once you're done, uh, we can move on to the timer event. Okay, so let's move on to the timer event here. So at the moment, I think we're drawing anything on there. Let's see if I run this now, anything shows up. Okay, no, it's just the background at the moment. That's fine. Okay, that's because we're not running the make butterflies function yet. So if I run a make butterfly here. There you go. So one of them shows up. And then it straight away goes into straight away goes into an error. Okay, uh, I know why that happened. It's because we're running it off directly off the list. So uh, in C sharp, when you when the list is created, um, instead of us manipulating the list itself, if you use a to list, yeah, right, what it does it creates a virtual copy of the list and then it will merge it when the memory is available. Okay, so to do that because we're removing something from the list there, right? It will it will basically cause some issues. So right now, if I go ahead and make a few butterflies, I'm just pressing Control D here about four times. And then let's try there again. I click Start. So right now, as you can see, there's four butterflies that's been created. Click on one, goes away. Click another one, goes away. Click another one, goes away. Okay, and then now there's no errors. That's because we added that to list to it. So the plan here is to dynamically create these without running the function like this. We can run it from inside of a loop or inside the timer or whenever the time limit reduces down. Okay, so I can delete these now. That works perfectly fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the LBL time dot text is equals to I'm left and then we say I'm left dot two string because this is a float. Um, we're going to do a little bit of work with this one. So uh, there's a, a pound sign that you can use or the hashtag sign that we can use. Uh, we don't want to show any decimal points with this one. So floats usually have decimal points, and then you know you can if you want to show decimal points, you can just say pound and then hash and then hash again and hash again a couple of times to show the decimal values after the point. But we just want to show one, two, three, like whole numbers. That's why I'm using a single pound sign here. Okay, and then after that, two string, I'm gonna say plus another one, and then another quotation, and then S. This just symbolizes for seconds. I'm gonna say LBL, okay, LBL quote is equals to quote plus quote. So it just shows the value of the however many that we quote so far. And then um, to match the time, because this timer is running at 20 milliseconds, so we need to match that with the float. So we're going to say time left minus equals to 0.03f. Okay, so each 20 milliseconds is going to reduce 0.03 from the 60. So that's how we're going to be matching it with the 60 seconds. Okay. And then we're going to run an if statement. So here we can check how many butterflies we should spawn um, in the game. So we can say butterflies list, butterfly list dot count, 
if butterfly list count count is less than spawn There you go spawn limit right there i don't know why is that not showing up there it's okay okay so if it's less than the spawn limit which is 30 spawn time we're going to say minus minus so we're going to reduce one from the spawn time if spawn time is less than one we don't run make butterfly function and then spawn time is equals to more limit Excel. Okay, so what that will do is it will create 30 butterflies on the screen for us. And now we have one, two, three. Okay, and then I can click on them and you can see that my core value is being updated as well. timer is working at the moment it's nicely showing one value is going down okay so now that we are spawning it on the screen now we need to animate it okay, let's do it for each again the butterfly okay. butterfly list okay so we've done for each quite a few times now Okay, and inside of here, now we're going to need to run the butterfly dot move butterfly function that we created inside of the class. So, okay, so this is why it's going to be moving it unpredictably. However, we also need to move it ourselves um, in the timer. Okay, so we're going to say butterfly dot position dot x is going to be plus equals to butterfly dot speed x. Okay. And while we're moving it towards the right of the screen, we also need to check if we hit the border at the right of the screen. Okay, so we can say butterfly the position the x is less than zero, or butterfly in the position the x plus butterfly the width is greater than this oh, this dot line size the width. So whether it's gone too far too far left on the screen or too far right on the screen we should be able to reverse the speed okay so in here we're going to say butterfly dot speed x is equals to minus butterfly dot speed x so this way we're reversing the speed um i also had some clipping issues when i was trying to do this one so whenever they went too far in and then they couldn't reverse out they just kept um flickering at the corner so the way to Minimize that is if you use an if statement here to say butterfly dot position dot x is if it's less than zero. Okay, and then we can say butterfly dot position dot x is equals to butterfly dot position dot x plus ten. So we're basically forcing the butterflies to be pushed into the form. So that way they still have the ten pixels there to move into. Okay. And then we're going to say else if here, the butterfly dot position x plus butterfly dot width is greater than this dot client size dot width. If that happens, then basically we just need to reverse that to say minus, so that way we're forcing it from the right side instead of the left side. Okay, so this way I'll actually manage to reduce the clipping to the edges. Uh, with the width, it wasn't so bad, it was mainly with the height side of it. Okay, so let's do the height first and we'll do the same thing for the height then butterfly dot position dot y is going to be plus equals to butterfly dot speed y okay and then actually we can just copy and paste that here right, and then change them to y and that to y here and that to height Okay, and then change that to Y. Is that to Y? And then inside of the clipping, we can say 
position the y is less than zero y it will be plus 10 this one is y again this one is height this one is y and last one here okay so we have our um, part of it the x and it's exactly the same as with the y um, basically we're just changing the y and the height instead of the x and the width okay so as long as your brackets are um, same as mine here as long as you're still inside the loop and inside the if statements it should be working just fine so if i just try to run this one now okay so as you can see the butterflies are starting to move okay and they are moving randomly somehow they've gone to the bottom and they just don't want to come back up again okay they're going quite down aren't they yeah we did reduce that down oh yeah that's because i didn't set that one to the width i said that one to the height but to the width still okay that's one uh, drawback of copy and pasting um, to the height as well so uh, these two should be height and these two should be width um, in the height one because we have a picture box there so when it goes greater than the height I want to set that to minus 50 and then this one here to minus 50 as well because we have a picture box here for the information so I want it to bounce off just at the edge instead of um, bouncing off behind it Okay, so let's try it again so if this one comes down here and then it bounces off just right here that's great and now if you click on it nice there you go you have living flying butterflies now inside the game okay so far so good there doesn't seem to be any clipping which is great uh, clipping is very annoying Okay, nice thing is because they're spawned in different times they are coming up as different times animation so it makes it look a bit more natural i suppose so it looks quite nice and colorful okay great all right so now for the last bit is to basically change the timer so if the timer has gone um to zero then we want to end the game okay so my for loop ends here so end of this one i can say if i'm left is less than one i can just run the game over function here okay and one last thing i need to do is i need to do a this dot invalidate inside the timer although we're running the this dot invalidate inside the animator as well uh, it's a good practice to run inside the timer because the timer is more consistent in 20 milliseconds so it should be able to give us a bit more the smoother the frame rate a little bit better okay so by doing the time left and setting it to game over we should be able to see a game over message come up whenever we hit uh, the 60 seconds is over okay so instead of waiting 60 seconds actually let's reduce the time down here to say nf that way we can just see the message pop up. So, yep. The catch, like view, while well, the time is running. Okay, so it says time's up. You've caught five butterflies. Click OK. Try again. And then click OK. And then it goes back to 60 seconds and it's redrawing the butterfly animations again. I hope you found this tutorial to be useful uh, if you have please leave a like and a subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next tutorial